Fishfield out here to come to Dyer or to Fish Lake Valley to Jim's place where we are now. And now it's time for prayer time before we do our message like normal. So here it goes. <laughs> what, what has this ministry meant to you, Brett? Oh, like which part? Well, the last 15 oh, years or whatever. Well, the last 15 years. Wow. It means a lot. So, last 15 years. That's hard to go over so quickly. I'd probably have to sit down and really go over it, but just kind of on top of my head, um, learned a lot, so much that, you know, a whole book. I mean, I, I wrote a whole book for 700 pages based on the studies I did in his um, classroom. And I feel like I'm almost like a PhD, which I'm not, but I've been in all these classes for so long and talking to Jim and pretty much when I talk to people I can answer almost all their Bible questions there's sometimes I have trouble but I know I don't know the whole Bible that's for sure it's just most people don't have that good of questions but <laughs> but you know I, I could answer them and so I feel like um, I did really well in this class with Jim's class and learned all this stuff and now I can navigate through truth and error so I can be able to tell you whether it's an error or truth based on what you're saying. And if I look into the Bible and also into the passages of Greek and Hebrew, which I just found out recently that if it's not in its original language, it's not inspired. So I guess some people, they can think whatever they want about that. But I know the tongue speakers will be upset. But um, it's not inspired um, in its... English language because it's lacking so much so like for instance um, Jesus Christ of Nazareth 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 is um, the anointed one salvation's roots I mean how much more beautiful can it get than that it's all tied in it's in a linear line it's it's perfect it's like mathematics so when you read English and you're a believer you're you're actually reading a diluted version of the text and it's still really powerful but if you read the actual real languages then you actually start really understanding all these things and, and how they line up so how could all these things line up like for instance in the tabernacle if you look at the tabernacle of the old testament and and you look into the, new, the future of what god promises are they line up so if you go into um, the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, there's the altar outside, and there's the bread, the show bread, and there's the, um, the seven churches of Asia, the lights, the lampstands, the seven lampstands, and the one is higher up than all the rest because, well, he's the mediator, and that's Jesus, and he's also the highest light in the room. He gives off the most light. And he says he's the light in the future. And he also is a sacrifice. And he has the altar there for the sacrifice. And he also says that he is the bread. And he has show bread. And he's from Bethlehem, the place of bread. <laughs> so you start tying all these things together. And then also there was one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Um... I can't think of it, but it's, it has to do with the tabernacle one in the future. But it's, it's beautiful and how it's seamless. And there's also, well, the judgment, uh, which is the brass and the silver's redemption. And um, the gold is deity. And um, the actual, uh, I guess it's called a skinne around the animal flesh, around the poles that hold it up. Well, each pole is wood and it represents humanity and then they have the these um the judgment god's judgment the brass the gold the silver redemption all on the pole and then they have the skin that wraps around all of them which is the flesh of jesus basically the future and um these are all things pointing to the future like but it's incredible and also the, the cracker thing too 
look at the cracker, there's the holes in the cracker, right? He, he was on the cross, right? He was pierced. He says he's the bread, right? So the bread was pierced. He was pierced, right? He is the bread. Um, but he's, he's put on the cross, on, on a wooden cross, the humanity, remember it's wood. So he's dying for humanity, you mean? I don't know, it's just every, I don't know, this is maybe harder for everyone to, to recognize, but just off the top of my head, and that's what I come up with, but, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal, really, how it all adds up. And then also on the, I was trying to think of one more thing on the tabernacle that went forward. There's also the rapture, or Elok and Elijah, they're the, the type of rapture, you know, the judgment, and the Noah's Ark. You know, they do, it's all this, it, it's, it's repeating itself over and over for different times and in different places, and but they're all adding up to the future of Jesus Christ coming back in his rapture. And so, if you look at all those things, it would be really hard for 40 authors to agree and also to write a story that's seamless over that many years without there being huge flaws. I mean, because we all know that right now it's hard to get someone to even, if you were to sit in a classroom and I were to tell someone something and say, to whisper it to them, by the time it gets to the end, it's not the same. <laughs> and it's only 30 people and, it, and we're told but we're doing it. So when you do all that, and it still comes out wrong, it shows you how fast things can be changed. So for the Bible to be that accurate that long and to make that much sense and to be seamless. And I don't know, there's so much more to what I, than the Bible what I'm saying, but that's just a little piece of it. But right. that's... Hmm. When you hear a preacher preach now, can you tell whether they know what they're talking about or not? Most of the time, I think. I mean, right. there's some subjects I'm like, I don't... But no. I mean, really, if you if somebody goes there when they talk about the church, do you do you know if they know what the church is or not? I do. Yes, you know what the church is. Oh, the so. seven churches of Asia. That's what I meant to say. The seven churches of Asia, or the seven lampstand. Yeah. Each lampstand represents a different church, and these churches are, I think, in are they in Egypt? No, they're in Asia. Asia. They're in Asia. Okay. Yeah, they're in Turkey. Yeah, they're in, in Turkey. Turkey. Yeah. Okay, and they're all um, under Muslim control right now. Yeah. Uh, but the seven churches of Asia are all telling us about what things we should be careful of in the church. So some people might represent those as they're talking about a person, but they're actually talking about the church itself and how they, how they structure what they do and, and how they relay it to you, and they're responsible for that. So... Like one of them is like um, Sardis, uh, Thyatira, I think. Um, they represent a time period in church history. Yeah, Laodicea. Yeah, Laodicea and, is now. Yeah, and they're and they're way back in Pergamum. They're way back in, in in the tabernacle, and then they come all the way through time. Yeah. Because there's thousands of years there between them. Yeah. And between for it the to tabernacle be, and the church age. Yeah. So for that to line up, and the church didn't even exist, that's seamless. I mean, it, you have to be God to do that. So, um, and the fact that they don't give God credit for, or Jesus Christ credit for, coming here and defying gravity, uh, doing the miracles, overcoming death. Um, I mean, we got people like, um, what's that guy's name? Newton, a uh, picture of Newton up in MIT, which I think is okay, but... I think Jesus' picture should be first because he's the one that recognized all of it and overcame it and told everybody. And here we are celebrating someone way lesser, you know. Not to make fun of Newton because we know he did good Sir stuff. Isaac Newton. You're talking about Sir Isaac. Yeah, the guy that the apple, the apple fell off the tree, yeah, you know. And the, the theory of gravity. Yeah, he made the field of theory of gravity. Jesus overcame it and somehow we got those mixed up in their placement. <laughs> but, yeah... I don't know. I, I'm a science major, and um, most of the people don't believe in, in, in uh, Christ that are in science. But I think that 
it represents and, and, and shows proof that he is real. It's funny, Israel. He shows proof that he is real and, and that the things that he does and the life that he comes up with and that he made all correlates with what he says. And then it's funny how they come up with that atom. Their first thing is an atom. And the first person is Adam. And I mean, they're spelled, of course, different, but it's just, I think it's weird. But I had a hard time in school because I was a believer and I thought science supported God's creation and what he said, and they were always challenging him. But if they get far enough in science, they'll know that he is real because um, what was the stuff we're talking about that the changes shape it can change shape um, well subatomic particles yeah the subatomic particles I mean they can exist in two states at the same time so but then and they can be in two different places at the same time the same subatomic particle and they can be different things but the same so that just shows you right there that the creation you know that's like seamless and we can't see everything and we don't know everything and we're not supposed to and so but the more we're able to see the more it looks like god is real like that science is proving the existence he is i think when i look at it after all the studying and stuff i've been shown i i think it does line up but you know a lot of people will say no but they don't really have a lot of evidence you know what i mean they don't have anything really backing it up True science and true medicine always backs up the Bible. Huh. But we're not talking about, I'm talking about true science and true medicine, not speculative. There's a lot of speculative stuff in science. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of speculative. And people don't even, really, they don't even understand it really. But even, so the rocks are speaking out to, to God when they go, um, I was something the other day, it was on TV, and it was interesting, and they were talking about it, and... It was a, like, you know, like geology, people say, well, even the rocks will speak out, you know. What does that mean, you know, a rock is going to speak? Well, no, but when you examine it, it can give you information. Archaeology. Yeah. Dead it, men tell tales. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It gives you information. And it's like the Pangea, you know, that's one of the things the Bible says is real. People say, oh, I don't know, you know. But if you look up all the continents and the edges of them, the even if they're far apart, the soils really close and match, and even you know, I mean, it's like a puzzle. Yeah, they fit together. And Pangea, Pangea was one land and one water. Yeah, yep. Godwana or Pangea. And um, well, I learned a lot. That's not. I mean, this. I think the tabernacle is good. I wrote that book on it. Church um, history was all right. Church it? history is outstanding. It's an outstanding one if you want to learn something. I try to get people to watch that. Some of them do. I think if they started watching it, they would they'd really like it, and they'd watch more. But you know how it is when you bring up the Bible stuff. It's hard to... And history. It's hard to get... <laughs> yeah. like History, too. Like, yeah, for instance, I knew some history majors, like some pretty good ones. And I was talking to them, and I was like, wow, you know. I said, so, where is John Calvin in the Bible? And they were looking for it. And I was like, wow, okay. I go, well, me might as well look for Luther, too. <laughs> I go, he's not there either, you know. So Joseph Smith. Yeah, you might as look for Joseph Smith. He can write his own text, you know. But, so, yeah, I don't know. I think we need to stick to people that are in the Bible, you know. And I think there's some people that maybe helped along the way, you know, that with the Bible and stuff. Maybe, I don't know about Luther. and I guess Luther was okay a little bit. John Calvin, I don't know, and he doesn't seem like he's great, but I'm not here to be mean to someone or nothing. He, I, I don't, I can't judge that person really. I don't know what he's going through, but I just know that he was. Um, people were getting their own messages, and they were making. They kind of, I feel like they're made up. You know, like, well, what does John Calvin have to do with the Bible, really? I know he is Calvinism and all that stuff, and Jim's explained to me five-point Calvinism and tulip and all that stuff, but um, but why is he even in there? I mean, why is John Calvin even talked about? Because if we were going to talk about somebody, why wouldn't we talk about Cornelius? He was actually in the Bible. Was he in the Bible? He's in the Bible text. What? Cornelius is in the Bible text. No. He's not. No. 
There's well, well, there is a Cornelius, yes. But he's not the one I'm talking not about. Not the one you're talking about. Okay, so see, I messed up that too. So I thought there was somebody in there, but he well, was actually in the... Cornelius, that's the first Gentile church. He's in the first century, right? Yeah. He's like, so, and he fought, he had the, these... The, the Cornelius also was later. So I, but he's not in the Bible though, right? But not the same ones. Yeah, so I think right now in this world that we're in that um, we got to get back to the more basic stuff and... Study and, the Bible. Yeah, and like I say, I talk to tongue, tongue people all the time. Oh my gosh, just tongue people everywhere. Charismatics everywhere. They're all talking to, to Jesus. They're all talking all night long to him. I mean, they're like best friends. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I thought they were like going on a ride up you know, up to the coast or something and that him and Jesus were just talking, you know, and he was telling me, you want to hear about it? I, I, well, I really do. I, I really do. But is there a revelation? Is it contrary to the Bible or does it go along with the Bible? I, I don't, that's a good contrary. question. I, they never even have one. It's, it's contrary. Yeah, most of the time they tell me, yeah, we talk to God, you know, and well, what would you guys talk about? What'd you learn? Well, um, yeah. um, no answer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well what'd you talk about? Oh, was that an unknown yeah, language? The Bible that taught Oh, God. okay. Well, that's that's pretty funny, really, because um, it does say it in there. We're not saying God doesn't have the power to do that, but if you look at it Pentecost uh, carefully, um, and me and Tori talked about this, and she she brought this up. Um, one of the thing, the details in Pentecost when Peter was speaking, was that was the listening part. It was not about talking or interpreting. It was about listening and in their own language. The real language you could read, write, and speak. Not one that you could not. And so all these people have all these revelations and they want to talk to God. And I think that's great that they want to talk to God. But they never have anything. And when we go look at the, the verse, I think it's like 1 Corinthians 14, 7. No, 1 Corinthians 14, 17 or something like that. I think that's what it is talks about people speaking in tongues and unknown languages and all this stuff. Okay, so what did he tell you? So God spoke to you in an unknown language? So he's not, so God's about confusion? Okay, he's not, okay. So what did you learn? Tell me about what you learned. Let's think about people in the text. Uh, Moses, he learned some stuff. What about uh, Elijah? Okay. How about David? Um, how about Paul? So we talk about all these people who um, have met and talked to the Lord supposedly, and they come back with some real information, like something that the people go, "Whoa, well, that's pretty good. okay, that's good. I understand a revelation or something." You know, these people come back with nothing. They're 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 in the prison all day or wherever they're at all day long, and um, you know they're sitting in love and light, you know, and. Um, and, um, but they don't though. They don't know anything. They, what's funny and what I learned about this is that I'm in Jim's class. He's not about tongues. He's not about any of these things. And yet I'm schooling them. I'm like, why is it I can school you in the Bible and you talk to God? You know I mean? I find that hard to believe. Because <laughs> if you really talk to God, I mean, you should have some answers. Right? I mean, what's your revelation? What did you bring to the church? It's not an interpretation. You know I mean? Like, what did you learn? So if I go talk to God, I'm expecting to come back with something. Right? I mean, do you guys think so too? You go speak to Jesus Christ or God himself. When you read the Bible, you come back with something. Exactly. Yes. So he gives you everything you need. Yeah. And I can answer all the questions they do with tongues with the Bible text. More so. So maybe they need, maybe you guys need to, you know, change paths. Correct a little bit here and realize that Speaking in tongues is not what you're saying it is. It's not even close. Because if you think about it, and I understand it, the babble was the confusion, and so the Pentecost would have been clarity. So how do you how do you get that mixed up with God? Like how do you get God not being able to give you a message uh, in your own language? But he's God. I think that's weird. And so like I prayed about this a lot. I was this really bugged me, man. I was really like, ugh. Oh. I don't really understand this. I mean, this is bugging me. This guy next door to me had this, he had his wife. They were married for a long time. And his name's John. I'm not going to say his wife's name, but she was real sick. And I think she had multiple sclerosis or mm -hmm. something like that. She's getting worse. 
She's a Catholic. And 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 John, he, he's not a believer. You know, the husband's not a believer. And so she's getting sicker and sicker. And he come over, he knows I'm a believer, and he was talking to me, and he's like, hey man, you know, should I take down her Catholic stuff? You know? I'm like, well, dude, she's not dead. So don't take it down, you know? Like, just wait, you know? And so he did, and, she, and it wasn't too long that she died. And, you know, he's real sad, his wife for a long time and everything. And uh, he came over, and he was crying a little bit. And I said, okay, it's time for you to surrender to Jesus, you know? And he oh, I'm doing that. He ran off, you know? And I said, okay. So the next day or two, I think it was the next day, or maybe the day after, he came over and knocked on the door. And he was crying. And I was thinking, okay. We got this guy's attention, you know what I mean? And he, he says, Brett, um, I want to talk to you about something. And I said, okay. And he started telling me about um, how this angel came and saw him at night. And I go, really? The angel came and saw you? And he's all, yeah. And I go, well, when did this happen? He's all, well, he came last night. And he came with my wife. And his, he had a name, too. He named the angel. I go, this angel, that was his name. I mean, it's like Barnaby or something, you know, something, Willoughby or something. I don't know, it was some weird name. And so I was all, okay. So I was just thinking about it for a while because John told me this. And um, the angel came and talked to him. And so I go, oh, good, this is God trying to answer the question for me. I said, okay, John, when that angel talked to you, what language did he talk to you in? And he goes, because there are always these angelic tongues, remember? Oh, the angelic tongues. Okay, so I said, well, what did he talk to you? And he said, he talked to me in English. And I said, he did. And I said, think, I'm thinking in my head, I don't know if I really believe you. So I asked him a question he might not even think about. I said, was your wife, was she healed or was she still sick? He goes, oh, she was healed. I go, I believe you. You know what I mean? Because she wouldn't be in heaven and be all like that. So that tells me, and I go, that angel spoke to you in English. So he knew your, he knew your language. If you were German, he would have spoke to you in German. You mean? He just happened to be English. And so this angelic tongue that they're talking about, everybody wants so bad, is fine and everything, but I don't, you're not going to need it, guys, until you get to heaven. So I would not worry about the angelic tongue here. Okay, just... Settle in on what you know, like English or German or Japanese or whatever, and and learn it in that. That's the unknown tongue. The unknown tongue is the one that that people don't can't speak that language. If I go to Japan, I can't speak Japanese. You know, I'm not fluent, so it'd be pretty hard for me to tell the person about Christ in their own language and get them to understand. Okay, but if I but if I had the gift of tongues, I wouldn't have to do that, right? Okay. Well, we know people have tried all this stuff before in the languages and they failed and they had to get interpreters, okay? And so, until I think what people need to do in this tongue arena is that I don't think you're asking for enough. I think you need to go further um, in your study and you need to go like maybe search it out in a different country or something and see if you can go get those skills to work somewhere else. Because if you have these tongue skills, I mean, think about it. Billy, uh, or Oral, let's see, was Billy, was it Oral? Was it? that guy's name that was from I'll give you a Maui I'll see I want a 325i BMW and I need a condo in Maui uh, Oral Roberts okay he was gonna heal all the kids remember and he ended up building hospitals <laughs> I mean what happened guys I mean why is he building hospitals he can heal the kids I mean shouldn't we have some more spaces in there so I think it's good everybody wants to do that I think it's nice and everything but um, the reality of it is, is that God's in control, not you, and that you're not talking to Him, and you're not more special uh, than anybody else, really, unless He really wants you to be. If and, God would speak to you, He'd speak to me in English, wouldn't He? Well, yeah. I mean... But God already speaks to us in His Bible already. In English. Yeah. You know I mean, and if you go to Germany, we have a German translation. So it's, yeah. And his, his goal was to get it across the whole world, and to get it to all languages, and that doesn't mean an unknown language. So why do we need to know have, we have languages if it's an unknown tongue? Why can't we just get up and speak and everyone understand? Because it only happened on that one day when, when I guess Peter spoke either Hebrew or Greek. I guess it was Greek. I don't know. 
one they of all them. heard him in their own languages. But he, he spoke in his language, the and they language heard him in theirs. Unconfused, yes. So it was about hearing. It was more about hearing <laughs> than interpreting. It was more about hearing than tongue speaking. So if you if you realize that and you look at it carefully, the tongue speakers, well, they don't want to see that. You know, they want to run from that information because that would mean that what they've been doing is a waste of time. And also, it's not real, maybe, you know. I don't know. I've seen some stuff happen that was interesting. But, you know, let's remember that the, you know, the dark spirits, they have power too. The dark world has power. They, they have power. They can do miracles. They can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So. And it will in the last days. That will happen. Yeah, so if we in don't know who we're talking to, then we're in a type of confusion. And that means that you should be careful. You should back off. Until you can hear clarity, until you understand what the message is, you be, you be careful because you're out there skating around on some thin ice. Um, but I think you tongue speakers are cool because you want to be close to God and that's the way you try to do it. And I think there is some people that have that gift or will have it. But it's, it's not short, up to us. It's a shortcut. Yeah, it's like if God wants you to have You can either gift. study the Bible or you can try to get out there and talk to God. But if you have the same information, but it's not the same information. What they're getting is not, it's all contrary to God, not, not, God's revealed word is going to be solid. It's written in stone. Okay? Clarity. But when they get a different revelation, a different Jesus, a different all this stuff, most of these Pentecostals are, many of them are oneness, which the theologically is incorrect. God wouldn't lead them the wrong way, would he? Okay. No. It, he wouldn't lead them to <clears throat> do, do all these things that are contrary to the Bible. I They're all so. looking for a continuous revelation, not a set revelation. The Bible is not enough to them. They have to have more. Right, they more, have to have an more, extra more. biblical revelation, like the Pope. Yeah. You know, like I asked my friend, he's a Catholic, he's Irish, and mm -hmm. I think his daddy even went to Vietnam to fight for the Catholics. I mean, they're good, they're good people, they're a good little family, you know, but uh, he just, I don't know what I was going to say except that the Catholics... They have the Pope, they have these external revelations, and they want to say he's not more special than other people, but I said, but why But why is he in that robe? And why is he, why is he up in front of everybody? Why, why does he have that hat on like that? <laughs> and why is he in that, in that, that thing with the handles, with the, with the glass around it? Everybody there to see him. If he's not more special. You know what I mean? There's How no the, Pope in the Bible. Yes, sir. No, there's not a pope in the Bible, though. Then the Catholics there's no will tell you. foundation for that at all. Peter's the pope, but Peter was dead for 300 years before the Catholic Church started. <laughs> at least, right? Well, they they didn't start that to about 600 A.D. So 400 years, maybe. Yeah, more. I think it was 500 years, 500 years before they started popes. But then they tried to make believe and trace the pope all the way back to Peter, but that doesn't work. Yeah, I, so they um. <clears throat> The Catholics, they, they're missing out on a lot of stuff. They could actually do some great stuff. And they're missing out because of they follow their traditions. And they're actually not really into the Bible text that much. They're into their traditions and whatever the Pope and the Bishop and the Archbishop or Cardinal, whatever you call him, whatever they say. Thank you. Yeah. He's like, okay, you're done, buddy. <laughs> All right. Good. I did good. Well, we'll we'll go on with that. We won't go into this other thing tonight. But you brought that up. You're here at our church, and we've been talking a lot about this lately. I've done a lot of studying in church history. Sharon's supposed to bring a, another message on church history on her take on it from Volume One of John T. Christian. And then we're going to finish, we're going to do about 100 classes on church history this time. But anyway, church history. <clears throat> the Catholic Church, the, the movement. Now, Catholicism always brings in heathenism to the church. To work their idea. If you go to college and study church history, they're going to teach you history of the Catholic Church. Not church history. That's not church history. The Catholic Church it didn't start until 325 A.D., but ever since the Catholic Church started, well, within, <clears throat> let's say, 300 A.D. to 400, 500 A.D., you'll see them adopting paganism all along. Anything that'll 
get the people into the church. Many Baptist churches today are now charismatic, so they want to build up their membership, so they accept all the charismatics in the church. That's you need to be doctrinally sound. That is not doctrinally sound. In Catholicism, in uh, Pentecostalism, all of this, we don't have a standard Bible. We have uh, a continuous revelation, a continuous Bible it, through them. The Bible is from Matthew, or not Matthew, but from Genesis through Revelation. We have the New Testament, we have the Old Testament. When the Catholic Church, like, let's take for instance, church, the, the, the Church of England. After Henry VIII died, his daughter, uh, Mary. Remember Mary? Mm -hmm. They called her Bloody Mary. The reason why she's called Bloody Mary is she killed 288 Baptists, basically. Because they didn't believe in the transubstantiation. The perversion of the Lord's Supper. And they would take them and they would burn them alive. Burn them alive. One woman, they burned her alive. She was pregnant. They didn't know it. But she has the baby while she's burning. Well, they grab the baby. They take it out of the flames. And they run over with it. And they pass it back three or four different people. They didn't know what to do with this baby. They finally threw the baby in the flames and killed the baby. Because it was probably uh, infected with this heresy that the, the Eucharist didn't become Christ, body and blood. You see all of this. Baptists never persecuted anyone in history. And Sharon brought that out in one of her last classes. The Catholic Church now, quite a number of Catholics, because they believe in this continuous revelation, they believe in all this, so their tongue talkers are charismatic, charismatic Catholics, Catholic hostels is what they call them. And they accept that very well. They accept the healing, they accept all this kind of stuff, which is not, there are, you don't have the gift of healing today. You don't have the gift of tongues today. The gift of tongues is not unknown languages. The gift of tongues is you could go and speak to someone in their language like Brett was, Japanese, Korean, whatever, without ever learning it. That's the gift of languages. But what they're taking today came, what the charismatics claim as a gift of God, came out of paganism. It didn't come out of God. Those uh, prophets of Baal were talking in tongues there on Mount Carmel so many hundreds and thousands of years ago. So was the, 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 the prophet of Delphi and all of that. These were all, they were talking in unknown tongues. These unknown tongues were pagan things. Now, they put unknown tongues in the King James Bible. It's not unknown tongues, it talk, it's languages that have, a, that have a glossary, they have an encyclopedia, they, they have a grammar, all this. These are grammatical languages, it's not unknown languages. But people that don't know the Bible, then they come in here and say, look at this. There's not a Bible scholar among them at all, because they don't study the Bible. They want, they want it all poured in their head. They <laughs> yeah. want it the easy way. They want easy religion, easy experience with God. You can have the most wonderful experience with God in this, in this world today by studying His Bible and by the Holy Spirit guiding you in your life through the Word of God. That's the right way. The wrong way is to come on, and, and it's so hard. You have these, I have charismatics come to me all the time. They come up to me and they'll say something to me. And they'll say something off the wall. And they'll tell me something that I'm wrong. Because God told them I was. <laughs> but what they're saying is contrary to the revealed will of God. Who's right? God's right, not them. I'm not right if I don't go to the Bible. If I am bringing out my own experiences instead of biblical truths. That's not the Bible. It's not what I think. I, if I had a, a vision, so-called, I would, I would judge that vision, vision by what the Bible reveals. If it's contrary to the Word of God, I wouldn't believe it at all. Right off, I wouldn't do it. If it's contrary doctrinally against the Word of God, I wouldn't believe it. But see, we don't have that today. We, we have intervention of angels, don't we? 
Angels appear, angels disappear, and, and things like that in the life. Angels are triune. They have bodies, they have souls, they have spirit. They're made in the image of God like man was too. Okay. Anyway, we see all of this, but God is not ever going to reveal anything to you that's contrary to His Word. And if all this tongue movement and all these faith healers are all co talking contrary to what the Word of God is, and every one of them have got the prosperity gospel. You know, you see all of that. You see all of the prosperity gospel in all of this. Joel Olstein, every one of them, Every one of these people have got a prosperity gospel. You hear very little about Jesus, and it's all about you. It's what you have. You can do this. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to succeed in everything you do, and you're going to have lots of money because God wants you to have lots of money. That's what the world wants, isn't it? Isn't that what the world wants? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what the world wants. Everybody wants a Cadillac and, every, and a four-car garage and a Cadillac, Mercedes and Rolls Royce and all this and, and uh, big homes and everything. That's what they have. That's what they're at. They're saying, you can have all of this. God wants you to have it. That's what the world has. That's what the world wants. What do you want? Do you want to know God personally? You want to know? You want to have a personal relationship with God? That Jesus Christ died for your sins. Well, I feel this. I feel. I feel. I said, Did you ever ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and repent of your sins and ask Him to save your soul? Well, no, but I feel real good. You know, I mean, you you're not part with God. You you don't have anything to do with Him until you that until you do that. And these people have these experiences, and they're replacing that with real repentance and real belief. And they don't want to hear the Bible preached either. I mean, the Bible is, that's too much trouble. But that's God's revelation to us. That is real revelation. It's not maybe. It's real stuff. I always taught, you know, I teach in, from the original languages a lot. The, 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 the translations in any language are flawed. They're not inspired. But the original language of the Bible is inspired in but the translations, many of them, you can preach the gospel in it. You can learn a lot of stuff with it. I've always taught people, if you're not too lazy, then learn what it really says. <laughs> right? <laughs> they skip it all. It's kind of like we're lazy. You know, we want somebody to do it for us. Wouldn't it be nice if you went to college and somebody did all your homework and you just all you had to do is walk across the stage and get your degree? And somebody else did it? That's the same thing. It's dishonest. We got a president up there in Washington, D.C. that did that, you know. <laughs> Plagiarism and everything, everything else and perjury everything. and whatever. This is not the way you get things. I mean, you, you can crook your way there, which we know can be done, but you're not going to crook your way to heaven. You're not going to lie your way to heaven. You're either going to believe and do it God's way, or you're not going to do it at all. There's only one way to heaven. That is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He came into this world, that He is God. That He died in your stead. He had to become flesh to be Redeemer. Your co well, your kinsman Redeemer. And He had to be buried in the tomb for three days and He had to raise from the dead. He died for our sins, was raised for our justification. There's nothing beside that that will get you to heaven. <clears throat> not an experience. Not talking in tongues. Not. I mean, Brett, you talked in tongues a long time ago. I did. Yeah, you did. And I, I know when I talked in tongues, from my, and I tell people this too, I mean, my charismatic people, because I think that they're actually a lot of them, I think they're believers. But uh, you saw some demons too, didn't you? I you saw, experienced demonic activity around you. That's all I saw. Yeah. I didn't see any. Some people said it, because I asked them, I said, what do you see when you do this? Like, well, I never seen nothing like you know bad stuff, and I was all well. When I did it, all I saw was like shadows in a dark room, you know, like, and it was real scary. Kinda. It can be. It's real, isn't it? Yeah, it was real. It's real. It was very real, and it's very enlightening to your spirit, but not your soul. It's it is a fleshly thing. You you experience something exhilarating, except that it's not from God.
Oh, it's dark. It was dark. I, I experienced all those things, exhilarating. It was all those things exciting, except it was uh, it, it was scary. And um, I just remember, and it was funny because my, my son, he said, Dad, why do you get up at night and, and pray at the end of the bed on your knees, you know? And I was like, I go, because I'm scared, you know? <laughs> because I would speak in tongues, in the because sh- everyone's like, well, speak in tongues in the shower. Or speak in tongues when you're in... In, you know, in a dark room in a closet and and I did everything that they said and there was like something that happened but it wasn't many getting, times it's real but sometimes it's make believe if you know you got a private if you open the door for the devil and evil spirits they're gonna walk in yeah that's exactly that, right. that's it you're gonna walk you happen to be very honest your spirit was very sensitive yeah and I right. and I knew that and I rejected it that's and, good. And I felt like it was something... Now you know better, don't you? Yeah. I felt like it was demonic. Yeah. And you didn't I, get suckered into it. And I, I tried a lot of times to to put myself in the position of the people who said this stuff and listen to them carefully because I thought maybe I was miss, maybe I was doing it wrong or missing something. But that's not the case. It's just the people are reading the text wrong. It wasn't about any interpretation or any unknown tongue. It was about... Him speaking in his language and them understanding in theirs. Well, let me tell you the difference. The tongue talkers always exemplify and raise up the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we don't do that. You raise up Jesus. The Holy Spirit didn't do this. Jesus died for us on the cross. Okay? You, You honor Jesus. You worship what he did for you. They do different. And all of it, you're going to get something. You're always going to get something. You're always going to get something. And this group preys on the poorest people in the world. And they take their money. Oral Roberts and, oh, there's just... Lots of prisoners. Yeah. And they, and they don't let anyone else in there. They let them yeah. all do charismatic yeah. stuff. They won't let anyone break in yeah. that actually knows something. Anyway, Sorry. I hope you've learned something from this. Brett, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. You've been me. one of my... Have your Most mic. supportive students for 20 years almost. I don't know how many years. Let's I see. remember you came to my class so many years ago, and you've read the Bible a lot of times, didn't you? Yeah, 28. I yeah. read it before I even got in your class. Yeah. But you did, and you saw me coming there with an IV cup going into me and a catheter coming out. And he said, I came here just in time because I can take over this class. <laughs> well, you're and, a- a- and after he... After he was there about six or eight weeks or something like that, he came up to me. He said, "I don't know anything." Yeah, I don't know nothing, man. I gotta run. <laughs> you better come. You better get better, because I don't know that much. Well, I lived another twenty-something years. When now, was that? Now, what people, year was that? I've got a prayer request for you to do out there. I remember when you came. I've got Marilyn. I got a prayer request for you guys. Okay. I have a uh, a tumor in my brain, just on the left side. When I was poisoned with Arson, or with mercury, not mercury, but uh, propane, two years ago next month. It really, it deafened me the first night. I can't hear out of my left ear at all. And I oh, I could hear 80% out of that ear before that night. Woke up in the morning deaf. But, and a lot of tremors. I went blind last night, temporarily blind. I could not read, I couldn't see anything. I've done that a couple, three times when I was preaching. And I got to have an operation with this tumor, and the tumor's over an inch. And uh, the operation is going to last from 10 to 15 hours. Dang. They can't do radiation, they can't do anything at all to save my life except the surgery. And of course, I know one thing that I'm invincible and indestructible until the Lord is finished with me, but this may be the end. I need your prayers and I need your support, and it's going to cost a lot of money to do this too. Please help us. I uh, I need your help. I need your prayers for my wife also, because I am her sole caretaker. I take care of her, and I'm going to be down for one whole month as an invalid after this happens. If if I have the surgery. They won't do it unless they think my heart and everything will bring me through the surgery, and that is tremendous. But I, nothing will save my life except this, and they won't take out all the tumor. They're only going to take out part of it where it won't throw me into epilepsy, and I won't go blind. I, I won't, I won't, I'm going to lose the ability to speak and all of this stuff. 
my face will go paralyzed and all of that. So, and I'll be bald headed for a while, for sure, all the way bald headed. <laughs> They're gonna shave all my hair off to do this. But I, uh, I need your prayers and help to do this. Thank you, Brett, Tori, for being here. Our Father, we come to you and we thank you for this message tonight. I hope it touches people's lives all over. Thank you for all the lessons you give us. And just um, reach out throughout all the world that you may touch the lives that needed this message tonight. Please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray.